This small device here could offer a solution for many people in various scenarios. Specifically, it's about a network KVM. What it is, how it works, why it's such a cool device, and why I'm presenting it after the intro. Enjoy. For all those who don't yet know what a KVM is, here's a very simple explanation. A KVM usually comes from the server sector. The idea behind it, Nein. You have your server installed somewhere in the data center and of course you want to be able to install new software remotely, theoretically also be able to access the BIOS, change settings without having to physically go to this server every time, connect a mouse, keyboard, monitor and so on to carry out these tasks. For this purpose, most servers have a network port specifically designed for this and offer these remote management services. So you can remotely load new images onto it and or simply access the BIOS and install a BIOS update. This doesn't make sense for ordinary PCs, of course, but it can also be quite practical if you want to operate your computer while on the go. In the home server area, this is also very, very practical because there too, you might theoretically want to install BIOS updates. If something doesn't work on the computer, it would be practical to connect a monitor to it. And precisely for this reason, this device here could provide a solution. The whole thing is based on a relatively new microchip that makes it possible to make the HDMI port network capable. Nevertheless, it can also be quite practical to have this in the home network area. Even there, you need to install software updates or occasionally just need a monitor to see what's happening on the computer underneath. There have been solutions for this in the past, such as the Pi KVM, a completely open source project based on the Raspberry Pi. However, a Raspberry Pi is uh, relatively expensive and you also need uh, additional hardware, for example, to establish USB functionality. A Raspberry Pi does have an HDMI port, but it's only for connecting a monitor and you can't receive a signal through the HDMI port. Accordingly, this product here is super interesting for all those who might have wanted to try it out with a Pi KVM, but it seemed uh, far-fetched because it's relatively expensive. The Nano KVM is based on a relatively new chip that allows the display functionality and also the USB host functionality to be packed directly onto a board comparable in size to an Arduino. The only additional thing you need is a micro SD card on which we have to install the operating system. The whole process is relatively simple. For this, as with any operating system in CSA, installation, you take the SD card, connect it to the computer, ne, and then flash the image onto the SD card using Belena Etcher. Afterwards, insert the SD card at the bottom and then you can connect the HDMI port to the HDMI port of the graphics card, the USB-C port to the USB port of the computer and the network port to the home network. Go to the IP address of the device and you will see an interface where you can already see the screen signal. At this point, just briefly, before we take a look at the web interface, I would be very happy if you would subscribe to this channel. This way, we might be able to make my little dream come true and reach 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year. Also, of course, to improve this statistic a bit better. I would definitely be thrilled. And now, back to the video. So, when we enter the IP address into the browser, we arrive at this page and can log in here. And then we can already see the interface. Here, the image is displayed to me directly. I have now simply connected it to one of my Windows computers for testing and we can operate the PC here as if it were right in front of us. The cool thing is we can also adjust the resolution, wood, set the quality and adjust the FPS here. Additionally, we have the option to open a virtual keyboard here. This wood, can be quite practical if you want to control everything via a tablet, for example. We can change the mouse here, set the mouse mode and also mount ISO images. We install them by simply inserting the SD card into a computer and then dragging an ISO file into the directory. If we were to select it now, the computer would display that a new drive is connected and we could then boot this ISO image via the BIOS. Additionally, we can add scripts here, which we can upload directly and we can open the terminal. This means we are directly on the Nano KVM itself. So if we enter LS here, we can see that there are uh, already files in the directory. Lastly, we have the option to perform wake on LAN by entering the MAC address. After that, 
we could directly start the remote device. We can also turn the PC on and off, restart it, and so on and so forth. We would see a hard drive LED displayed here if we had one. And then, of course, there are settings here. We can also update the device. Meanwhile, there is also the option to install Tailscale on the device, allowing us to access it more directly from afar. And of course, we can also go into full screen here. Theoretically, you can even open the whole thing on a tablet and control the computer from there as well. By the way, this Nano KVM is also available in two variants. This one is oh, really the cheapest and has the disadvantage that you don't get any information from outside the device about whether everything is still working or not. However, the slightly larger version of this device has a nice small OLED display on top where you can see the device's IP address, as well as some status information. Additionally, you also have the option to power the unit externally. So if your motherboard ever runs out of power, the device will still stay on. Conclusion, I would say for any of you who might have your computer in the basement and therefore can't always easily access it, or who often tinkers with their PC, this can definitely be a cool solution to access your computer remotely. For those who also don't feel like installing any remote management software on their PC, but would still like remote access, this can definitely be worthwhile. I believe it's available for around 35 euros. Therefore, I would say, for anyone considering getting something like this, you can definitely go for it now. I'll definitely link the product below in the video description. However, I need to make a small note at the end. The firmware of the whole thing is currently not open source. The manufacturers have announced that they want to do this in the future. A small update, at this point, it seems that some of this code is now open source. The plan was actually to complete the whole thing, I believe, this month, and to publish everything. However, I couldn't really verify whether everything is online now or, or just a few things. It seems there were some problems with certain libraries. I'll definitely link the GitHub in the video description below so you can check it out yourself and read through these um, thousands of forum posts. Theoretically, the whole thing should also be compatible in the future with the same firmware that PIKVM uses, which is logically completely open source. However, this plan somehow doesn't seem to have worked technically. So I believe the project has been put on hold for now and only the actual firmware that is currently running on the Nano KVM is supposed to become open source. As I said, just a small note. If that's not a problem for you, I'll put everything in the video description below. For all of you who have always wanted this and have a somewhat greater interest in it, I would recommend the slightly larger version. I thought it wasn't necessary, but after trying it out here and initially not having the network cable properly connected, I was a bit unsure whether the device had even booted up and was functioning correctly. And I would have actually wished for the OLED functionality to see that the device had indeed booted up and perhaps just hadn't received an IP address. I will also link the slightly larger device below in the description. So that's it for this week. I hope you enjoyed it and maybe even found it helpful. If so, feel free to show it with a rating and if you have any questions, write them in the comments. You could do me a huge favor by subscribing to this channel so you won't miss any more videos. And that's enough of that. We'll see each other again next week. Until then, take care and goodbye.